Hello everyone. Uh, this is a presentation tackling the narrative of Ben Jonson, the uh, English dramatist of the 16th century. Uh, we have to place the narrative of Johnson in line with the narrative of uh, modern Western literary theory in general. It's the early beginnings of modern literary theory to be found in the 16th century in Renaissance criticism. We have two sides to this framework of analysis okay, of Western literary theory. One in line with Aristotle, the other in line with Plato. Now we have Philip Sidney actually in line with the metaphorical side of Plato. And we have Ben Jonson in line with the more realistic stance of Aristotle. So we would be interested in tracing how much Johnson is similar to Aristotle or different from him. So the question here is who is Johnson? Uh, Johnson was a Renaissance classical critic interested in ancient writings and writers. He was in line with medieval and humanistic thinking characterized by its reverence for and knowledge of the classics. As a classicist, he fostered the revival of classical literary forms in poetry and rhetoric. And as a dramatist, he was a realistic writer interested in realistic portrayal of character and action. The question can be raised here, uh, so what's the difference between Aristotle and Johnson in regard to dramatic representation in general? Both of them were interested in dramatic structure and representation. But while Aristotle actually gave much more emphasis to structure and the plot, uh, Johnson created a new theory about characterization and humors. So what's Johnson's theory of mimesis? Uh, both Aristotle and Johnson stressed imitation as the main nature of art and poetry. Uh, for Johnson, truth and copying nature is the basic principle okay, for any sort of classical theory in general. Johnson, however, focused on psychological realism okay, in poetry in his theory of humors. The theory of humors, according to Johnson, is based on the realistic imitation of character and temper. So each uh, uh, element dominating a character might affect his uh, uh, temper. So for example, if blood dominates, uh, the character seems to be more optimistic. Another sense of imitation, according to Johnson, is uh, uh, that the writer works uh, okay to be original, but at the same time he must uh, keep uh, in line with ancient writers and writings in general. So the good writer is expected to imitate the works of excellent writers. So what's the nature of poetry here? Uh, both poetry and painting are founded on fanciful imitation. But poetry is nobler than painting, according to Johnson. Why? Because poetry is a speaking picture, while art just appeals to the senses rather than to the mind of the human uh, recipient. The question here is, who is the poet? The poet is not just an imitator. He is rather a maker or a feigner. And that's why poetry is an art of imitation or feigning. So imitation in Johnson and Aristotle aims to represent reality as it is, okay, and that's, okay, the essence of the principle of verisimilitude. The poet is expected to write things like the truth. So the poet devotes, okay, his poetry to express the life of man in fit measure, numbers, and harmony. So what are the functions of poetry? 
According to Johnson, poetry is the queen of arts originally received from heaven. So the main functions of poetry, according to Johnson, are instruction and entertainment. So uh, what's the aim of instruction, according to Johnson? The aim is instruction in civility. And the other benefit is psychological relief of pain and suffering, for poetry comforts our adversity. So what are the features of dramatic poetry? According to Johnson, okay, who is an early example of neoclassicism, uh, okay, the main uh, focus of uh, literary theory is the laws of dramatic form. So uh, the plot must be an imitation of an entire whole and perfect action. So there is nothing missing in the line of action, and there is good proportion among the different constituents of action, and the action must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. The action uh, uh, scope must be neither too vast or elaborate, nor too minute or limited. So it must, it must not uh, cover uh, uh, huge events okay, or historical periods. It must be focused on uh, one single uh, uh, line of action in one particular place. So the action is based on one plot with well-connected parts or episodes, and uh, the time of uh, the action must not be more than 24 hours. Thanks for listening to this presentation.